Dr. John Smart is a futurist and a systems theorist, and he studies accelerating change and social resiliency. In other words, how do we bounce back from catastrophes? He's a professor of emerging technology at the University of Advanced Technology in Phoenix, and he's also the president of the Acceleration Studies Foundation. Please welcome Dr. John Smart. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so the title of my talk today is The Television Will Be Revolutionized. And it's a very exciting talk. People have been saying that TV is going to be revolutionized since pretty much 2001. There have been a bunch of really good articles you've probably seen, technology review and things like that. But I'm here to tell you it's really, really going to happen. And it's right around the corner and it's really exciting. Okay, and we're, we, we're all going to play a big part of this. Okay, so. Uh, the time that we live in is great. Okay. Now, I'm president of this little nonprofit called the Acceleration Studies Foundation, and we look at things that go faster every year. There aren't many of those things. They have to do with uh, communications and computing and nanotechnologies, primarily. And humans aren't, dis aren't creating the faster technological world. They're discovering ways to make the world go faster. So it's kind of humbling when you look at this and say, why things go faster every year? Because the universe seems to be structured so that it does when we just look in the right places and use our, our brains, okay? And we divide the world up into two things, that evolutionary change, which is creative, experimental, trying new things, unpredictable, like Stephen Jay Gould would say, and developmental things, like you've heard of uh, social and economic development, those things, all roads lead to Rome. They're predictable, science, mathematics, four-wheeled cars, computers, Web 3.0, pretty predictable, okay? And some of the trends that I think we need to think about are the world, the social tech and technological world is becoming, is accelerating in its intelligence, its interdependence, its immunity, which means its, its resiliency, its ability to bounce back from damage, uh, technological autonomy, which is what machines do without our help, and increasing physical, digital, and human-machine intimacy of our technologies. And Web 3.0, the internet television, is going to do all of these things. All right. Great book you can read if you want some background on this is Amanda Lotz's The Television Will Be Revolutionized. I have the same title from my slides. Uh, 250 pages available on Amazon. If you want the short version, go get my article. It's free on the web. It's 50 pages instead of 250 pages. So there. Okay. <laughs> and there's the uh, PDF link at the bottom. Okay. I'm a professor of emerging technology at this beautiful university called the University of Advancing Technology in Phoenix. And, uh, this is one of those technologies that's emerging, and I want to get you guys thinking about it, all right? All right. So, on to our talk. Web 3.0. The 3D video web is on the horizon. The internet is about to swallow the television. This is a very exciting thing. Soon, hundreds of thousands and eventually hundreds of millions of us around the world will be on a path back from being passive couch potatoes into actively engaged citizens again. The way our parents were just before radio and television came in the 1920s, okay? Robert Putnam in Bowling Alone says, the single greatest reason our communities have lost their local uh, participation is what? TV, okay? We're gonna have a whole new different kind of TV very soon, and it's gonna change the nature of local participation, okay? Very exciting, okay? Here in the early days of YouTube, BitTorrent, uh, Boxy, Hulu, Google TV, and the iPad. We're on the edge of moving from Web 2.0, the read-write or social web, with Facebook as a dominant player, right? To Web 3.0, what's called the metaverse, a web development layer that includes TV quality video, 3D simulations, mirror worlds, virtual worlds, augmented reality, hold up your iPhone and get all kinds of uh, overlay information, human constructed semantic standards, okay, built by us, and pervasive broadband wireless and sensors. Okay? Of all of these, the emergence of Web 3.0 is best defined perhaps by the emergence of uh, NTSC, which is old TV, or better quality video on our laptops, on our tablets, and on all of our mobile devices. And that's real soon now. Okay? Um, and it's based on, that video has to be based on open source and royalty free standards and technology. And it has to be freely and or cheaply shareable, mixable, and improvable under simple licensing structures. Now what's simple? iTunes is simple. A buck for it, right? An additional 30 cents and you get to share it. You get DRM free, 
That's simple. That's where video has to go, and it will. Okay? All right. So Web 3.0 will eventually be followed by Web 4.0, the semantic web. In that, in that world, you're going to have statistical, machine-constructed semantic tags. We're not going to be building the tags anymore. Okay? The machines will. All right. How are they going to do it? We're going to be talking to the web using some crazy thing called the conversational interface, where you speak to it and it speaks back. And if you don't believe that's coming, the average query length to Google today is five words. That's almost a sentence. There's almost emergent grammars there. Okay? Real soon now, within 10 years, everyone says this is coming. Read my article, The Conversational Interface, on Google if you want more on that. Okay? You can Google conversational interface and hit I'm feeling lucky because my article's still number one okay? since 2003. That's the beauty of the web. You write something that people think is interesting, it just sticks up there and people uh, talk about it. All right. So, but the big story of this decade is the metaverse, Web 3.0, the video web. Okay? That's what we're on the edge of now. FCC Chairman Newton Minow in 61, almost 50 years ago, called TV a vast wasteland. Remember that speech? Oh, chills, sends chills up your spine. Okay? And this comment is nearly as accurate today. From this beginning, TV has been first and foremost a tool for powerful voices, a one-way, lowest common denominator, monopoly-controlled uh, platform for entertainment mm -hmm. consumption and manufacturing consent. Right? It has been very effective in these ends, and it's our greatest single leisure activity in the industrialized world. Americans are particularly addicted to TV watching. Okay? Uh, since uh, in 2008, the average U.S. household watched eight hours, 18 minutes of television, okay? according to Nielsen Company. It's the highest since they started monitoring it in the early 1950s. Okay? We love TV, so quality TV is particularly important, isn't it? All right. So while our leisure time has gone up steadily since we left the farms and factories, we've increasingly spent it on television, and at the same time, by comparison to our elders, our community civic and political engagement has steadily declined over the last 50 years. If you want one single book on that, read Bowling Alone by Robert Putnam. Blow your mind how connected your parents were to their communities versus us. We're going to get that back, but we're going to need a new kind of media to get it. Okay? All right. The latest American Time Use survey tells us that fully half of our discretionary time is now spent passively immobilized in front of the, of the flickering screen. Half of our free time. It's big. Right? Fortunately, very soon, open source and open standards, uh, internet media centers and TVs interface with wafer-thin handheld tablets that look like Apple's iPad. You seen that beautiful thing? Okay. But they run Android instead, so they're fully open. Anybody can do whatever they want on it. Okay. They're going to be able to control tens of thousands of channels on that little thing. Well, look at those stick remotes that we have. We, we, we got those in the 80s. Before the 80s, we didn't even have those, right? Well, look at those like, oh, I remember that quaint day right? when I, I used to actually have a remote that I couldn't chat with my friends by email or see what they're watching or decide what I want to watch next and have all my friends with their remotes all competing to decide what's going to go on the screen next and play all kinds of cool games with them on the big screen, and I have the secret stuff on my tablet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's what's coming, okay? So, though cable companies and their major advertisers will hate this, Web 3.0 will soon deliver a universe of specialty video content we can easily rate, share, group, watch, edit, remix, and pay for in disaggregated ways. We'll be able to do not just broadcasting, but narrow casting and create astounding new competitive and, co and cooperative opportunities for video production and marketing. Okay? Industry consortiums like the Open IPTV Forum, formed by big TV makers and telcos in March 2007, tell us they're hard at work developing standards for interactive, personalized internet television service. But all they've managed to do in the last three years is create a web platform for delivering more highly, highly DRM-protected content. Okay? They don't empower users or democratize content production. I recommend you ignore this group and other equally misnamed ventures like the Open TV company that makes the set-top boxes. Okay? All right. In their visions, quality video is not increasingly ubiquitous, open, and free, but is still a scarce resource monetized by the few, and advertisements come into your homes without you controlling them. It's time for a change. Okay? This change is coming from groups like the Open Video Alliance, who are advancing open source, royalty-free standards and technology for web video. This movement is funded by companies whose business models revolve around openness, like Google, Kaltura, and others, and is presently overseen by independent, user-centric nonprofits like Mozilla and Creative Commons. Okay? 
Once the appropriate open video markup languages, OVML standards, have been developed by these nonprofits and employed on the new open internet TV devices, we'll be able to find quality video, rate and filter all the video we receive, share, edit, remix all the video that's, that's Creative Commons licensed. And these standards must also aid in indexing and marketizing copyrighted video that has simple and reasonable royalties and DRM attached. You and I know what simple and reasonable is. Okay? And if it's not simple and reasonable, we won't watch it. All right. With Web 3.0 TV, we'll be able to directly and automatically send micropayments to channel aggregators and providers of content. You know, those kids in their dorm rooms making $50,000 a year, making a specialty channel that you care about. Okay? We'll be able to make it, and those people will be able to make additional money from unobtrusive ads on their web pages like Google's AdSense. Every video channel producer will have the option of paying small sharing fees, editing fees, and remixing fees, a fraction of the also inexpensive video licensing fees. At first to independent content producers, eventually to the big studios. The way we can now pay a 30 cent sharing fee per song to download DRM-free music on iTunes from the big music studios today. Okay? These standards will allow us to pay independent editors and producers small fees to watch improved and often mercifully shorter movies with better non-Hollywood beginnings, middles, and endings. Right? You want to fix that crappy ending? You pay your $1 Redbox fee to download it and edit it, chop it out, and then you have to pay a remix fee of probably another 50 cents. Always has to be less than the rental fee. That's law now. So maybe it's 99 cents. Now you paid a total of two bucks, and now you can watch that previously unwatchable movie. <laughs> now that's a world where we all get better video, all right? So these, um, we'll also be able to watch our favorite NGOs rating and commentary. Oh, one, one to three minute Wikipedia videos on every subject that we're interested in. Think how many people are gonna watch that instead of, oh, I have to read that whole thing? Huh, I'll watch the video, right? And the videos will be competing against each other. And you might even pay half a penny. Of course, your robot will pay it. You won't pay it for the best one, the ones that are consistently rated five stars. Right? And those guys get money then to make them even better. Okay? We'll be able to watch our favorite NGOs rating and commentary in every political or business video program that we care about. Think of the next State of the Union. Right? <laughs> in streaming captions or sidebars, just as we can watch our better sports programs this way today. Advertising on Web 3.0 TVs won't go away. It'll just get more personalized and much less obtrusive. Okay? Small, lean Web 3.0 television channel producers will allow us to mute, half mute, or caption all commercials during the breaks, giving us back our conversation space. What a concept. And we can like, dislike, or speak back to the companies behind each advertisement that appears on our TV by email. Their email is going to be in the tag of the video. If it's not there, it just goes to the open web. Okay? And while and after each commercial is playing, right? Coca-Cola comes on, and I can say, I'm, I'm going to block it for a year until I know, you know uh, what they're doing about childhood obesity or do they, the, the sugar water dispensers in the schools. Have we gotten rid of those? Sorry, I'm not watching any Coke till that goes away. Thank you. Okay? Right? And we can tell them why and read the anonymized feedback of all others who talk back to their TVs in the same way. The advertising rates and audience shares for these less obtrusive, fully personalized Web 3.0 commercials will be far less than those in the uh, corporate media today, at least at first, but far more valuable, as the ads will now only go to those who want them in the way they want them. Most importantly, this ad revenue stream will still support millions, millions of new specialty video news, education, and entertainment channels. Okay? We start watching that stuff, we're just riding around the damage. They have to pay attention. They have to start copying it. We have to all have commercials that we can mute and talk back to. Why? Because that's, we like that better. Right? This, so you'll be able to watch videos with our friends, see what they're watching in real time, click links within or on the side of our video to find other video or audio or text related to the, to the video. Uh, on, as or after we view. We'll have the best hour or two of the day's specialty video content waiting to watch when we get home, and we'll know which of our friends also agree with our opinions on video content, and we'll make new friends as we view. It's a very different world. 
Considering these benefits, we can tentatively imagine that Web 3.0 video universe will be a great emancipator for all those who choose to use it. Web 3.0 is our declaration of independence from almost a century of intrusive, addictive, mind-numbing, mass-market TV programming and ads. We need a media that educates us, enlightens us, empowers, and motivates us to take action. We need a media that doesn't seek to endlessly addict or distract us as its core business model, but rather that can be customized to our needs. There will be many new forms of fun and new potentials for addiction and insulation in Web 3.0. But ultimately, if we control the choices, on the whole, this will make us as viewers more self-responsible and self-actualized. We need a media that can perpetually remind us that we are the ones who can fix our problems. We don't need to get scared of the latest killer bees outbreak or some other crapola coming across the crap tube, okay? We deserve representation, transparency, accountability, innovation, and sustainability, all right? We can use this greatly improved media to help us address some of our more difficult political and economic challenges as well, all right? Over the last 60 years, America's rich-poor divide has doubled more than twice. Today, the top 0.1% of Americans, or 300,000 people, earn as much as the bottom 150 million Americans. Okay? We've fallen from green to blue to purple on the UN's Gini Index. And now, income distribution in America is as unequal as third world countries like Venezuela, Argentina, China, and several African countries. Okay? As economic and political elites have risen and the middle class has hollowed out, our public educational systems have decayed, our manufacturing base has been sold out from under us, and democracy and freedom have greatly suffered. In 2008, the top 1% of Americans earned 440 times more income per person than the bottom 50%. That's absurd and is nearly double the income differential of 1980, which is nearly double the income differential of 1960. Okay, that's the world we live in versus our parents, all right? Top 1% to bottom 50% income and wealth differentials of 25 times or 100 times, the kind we see in healthy, competitive, educated, and highly industrialized democracies like Germany, lead the world in, who lead the world in every way that we care about, from quality of life to privacy to innovation to sustainability, are plenty sufficient to deliver global excellence and competitiveness. Beyond this, it seems a universal truth that greatly inequitable wealth in any country becomes corrupting from third world to first. Politicians are bought, cartels and payoffs emerge, and competition disappears. It's a very, very basic issue, income equality, all right? Fortunately, the web, oh, perhaps the best way to understand these dynamics is to understand Kuznets curves and the great U-turn. The world and most industrial democracies are following a Kuznets curve. Their income uh, uh, distributions are steadily getting more equal and have for over 100 years. The United States and the United Kingdom, since 1965, are in what's called a great U-turn. They are, we are outliers, anomalies, exceptions. What's happening with income distribution in this country is not sustainable because the rest of the world's not doing it, all right? Fortunately, the web's about to get a whole lot more intelligent and personalized and thus a lot more democratic. As we increasingly use it to advise our consumption, our voices, and our votes, I'm convinced that will be the critical difference that restores the balance. Big media companies and their shills will try to distract us from early versions of these open source devices and keep trying to sell us their pretty but vacuous walled gardens like Xfinity from Comcast. But we will soon have a choice. The more we choose to watch, rate, and share on open 3.0, web 3.0 media devices, the more we will return to the old ways of learning, thinking, and discussing our media with online friends, okay? And we'll also create cheaper, more personalized, more user-centric old media as a result. They can only delay our victory, they cannot win. This is nothing less than a revolution, and I recommend, like Howard Beale and Network, saying, we're mad as hell and we're not gonna take it anymore, okay? And last things that I, uh, six, six things that I recommend to you guys uh, uh, as practical things you can do. Use Netflix Watch, Watch Instantly and Redbox. It's the only reasonably priced DVD rental scheme out there at the moment. Uh, well, there's a few others, DVD play, things like that. Uh, buy a TV with an HDMI video input. Get ready for Web 3.0, it's coming soon. 
watch the two-minute Google TV video on the web and get real happy, okay? And buy a Google TV or a D-Link boxy box, one of those two when they come out this fall, all right? And then big four, number four, inhale. Cancel your cable or satellite TV, either now or when you get that box, and start using the open web. There's so much awesome stuff there, all right? And if you're really, if you're really uh, the techies out there, install BitTorrent and start using it to seed and share all the open source content that's cool that's out there, that's CC licensed. And use, if you have a website, use Kaltura for open source video. And uh, that's it. Thank you, guys. <laughs>